Hello everyone, well, thanks in today's second video. So we've already had a look at the weather next week to 10 days. You can find that video here on the homepage. Uh, just scroll down the page and it's above snow desk. Um, so we've got cold weather coming up over the weekend and into the start of uh, next week. And how long that cold weather lasts is open to question. Um, the ECWF run, which had been going for extended protracted cold easterly episode outbreak uh, next week, backed off with its midnight run uh, this morning. Uh, so it wasn't as cold uh, today, uh, the ECDF run, as it was yesterday. And so it looked like we took a bit of a step back from a chance of cold conditions. However, what was evident within the uh, models for today's first video is that high pressure is... At least to at least a week away, going to continue to lurk over Scandinavia. Whilst it may not pull the winds directly into an easterly from Russia, so it may not give us really cold and wintry weather through the course of next week. Nevertheless, it's lurking there. It's up to the northeast, and we need to keep a close on it. So I said we'd have a look at the GFS ensembles for tonight's second video. Go through all members of the ensembles and see whether there are any of these ensembles that are making anything of this Scandinavian high and easy win. So that's what we're going to do for uh, tonight's second video. Just say, but today's first video also includes a detailed look at what's going on in America. Some very extreme cold into northern east parts of America. Severe snow and uh, winter conditions, although it does look as though uh, conditions there will start to moderate and start to ease through the course of next week. But for the time being, it's incredibly severe weather in America. So if you're interested in that, have a look at today's first video. Right, so we're going to go through all members of the GFS one. We're going to start off with the operational run, which is uh, the run that we use every day. So this is just updated uh, up to for the midday run, uh, and uh, this is what it's showing. We're starting in a week, a week away, Thursday the 11th of January, and then we'll run for the extended range. So this shows up quite nicely. The problems that we've got in determining what's going to happen, because you can see it's basically the case of the irresistible force, which is the area of high pressure over Scandinavia, and going back into northeast Europe, meeting the irresistible object, which is the area of low pressure in the Atlantic, a deep area of low pressure. The two are fighting a battle for ascendancy, and uh, we'll just have to see what's going to happen. So, we're starting off in a week away with high pressure over Scandinavia, but low pressure is out in the Atlantic. Let's see what the operational run uh, did with this. So, we find that as we run through, the low pressure in the Atlantic... Um, quite easily wins the battle, actually. The high pressure is pushed push back into uh, sort of western parts of Russia. And this low pressure is coming through very quickly through the course of uh, next week and then through into the middle part of the month. Now, just as the low pressure is coming through from the Atlantic doesn't mean that it's mild because the air, the air this year is colder than you would typically expect in an Atlantic flow. And we've spoken about this in videos a lot because the jet stream, and you can see where the jet stream is on these charts with this black line here, the jet stream is digging to the south of the UK. So this winter, uniquely, we are being placed regularly on the cold side of the jet stream. So although we don't make anything of that easterly outbreak um, with this operational run of the GFS, by the 17th of January here, we're in the extended range of model, but we are putting down a very cold north northwesterly on the backside of this area of low pressure. That's all because the jet stream continues to be aligned northwest to southeast, and we're on the uh, northern side of that jet stream, so we're on the cold side of it. So we do actually get quite a cold spell. Look, we're going to the north in the second half of uh, January, albeit temporarily, and then we're back into westerly winds again by the time we finish up on the 20th of January. So no easterly there, but we do get quite a uh, protracted, well not protracted, but do get quite a potent cold snap occurring just after the middle part of the month. Now let's run through the ensemble members. So have a look at the control uh, first of all. So this is run at a slightly lower resolution compared to operational run, but it's at a higher resolution compared to all other ensemble members. 
Again, we're starting off in a week's time. We've got the high pressure in over Scandinavia, low pressures in the Atlantic. Let battle commence. So we run through into uh, the end of next week. And, uh, well, the Atlantic is trying to break through. What's going to happen? Well, we find that the Atlantic does come through with those areas of uh, low pressure. But again, you'll see that the low pressure, because the jet stream is tracking to ourselves on the cold side of the jet, those low pressures are pulling in colder air from the north. So there is wintry potential with those areas of low pressure running into the middle part of uh, January. Then it looks like it's turning quite stormy and then possibly quite cold again by the time we go through to the uh, end of the uh, run, which is uh, Saturday the 20th of January. Uh, this is how ensemble member number one is looking in a week's time. So low pressure looks closer to us on this run, but the high pressure is still there over uh, Scandinavia. Now this is a easy win for the Atlantic. This is just bringing these deep areas of low pressure in from the Atlantic Ocean. Not particularly cold either. The wind remains sort of from a southwesterly direction. That's quite a mild one on Sobel member number one. On Sobel member number two, now this one has a high pressure closer to us over Scandinavia. So we're almost pulling in an easterly wind there in a week's time. What's going to become of that? So we find the low pressure tries to move in on Saturday the 13th of January. That high pressure really is stubborn. It's uh, struggling to uh, get in that low pressure. Eventually does break down that high pressure and we go into uh, a stormier spell around Monday the 15th of January and then it's turning quite cold uh, and still unsettled as we're going into the uh, second half of uh, January. Ensemble member number three looks like this. Now, the high pressure is even closer to us on, uh, over Scandinavia uh, on Thursday. So, this is placing us in an easterly flow with these areas of low pressure out in the west much weaker. Let's see what's going to happen with this one. So, uh, we run through and we find that the areas of low pressure do struggle to move in. They're probably bringing a snow event uh, there as they're trying to get in around Monday the 15th of uh, January. Uh, and then the low pressure it does break through but it quickly turns the wind back into the north and uh, then we're having a go at building the Scandinavian high again so that's a cold one and there is some slow potential with that ensemble member number three ensemble member number four looks like this high pressure is dominating across Scandinavia in a week's time the winds are coming in from the east and they're cold easterly winds as well, let's see what's going to happen with ensemble member number four. So it looks like it turns dry and frosty and cold uh, running up to the middle part of January. Then the Atlantic breaks through and we go off and running into a mild zonal episode before we finish up, possibly putting down some colder air from the north. This ensemble member number five, and this one has low pressure over us. High pressure is weakened over Scandinavia in a week's time. Uh, we run through and it turns unsettled, running up to the middle part of January. Quite uh, stormy, potentially, with this area of low pressure. And as that low pressure pushes through, but we're on the cold side of jet stream uh, still, so possibly turning a little bit colder there uh, with our solve member number five. Solve member number six, look, high pressure is dominating over Scandinavia on Thursday at 1,040 millibars. The wings are uh, moving in from the east as well. Uh, we go into the weekend of the 13th and the 14th of uh, January. Low pressure is coming in off the Atlantic. It's coming into cold air. has quite cold air behind it as well, so that might be some sort of snow event that's moving across the country there uh, from the uh, 14th to the 15th of January. Then we go into a stormy spell of weather and then we pull in some cold wings and we finish up again looking quite stormy with low pressure heading in. That will make him much more of a Scandinavian high in a week's time. This is ensemble member number seven. It has low pressure to our south. High pressure is up over Scandinavia. That looks unsettled quite stormy. Might be some snow potential with that and that's just uh, a week away on Thursday. We'd have to look at the exact parameters of the atmosphere with that. Uh, and then we go through up to the middle part of January, looking unsettled and stormy. Then we go into these cool uh, sort of westerly winds in the second half of the month. Uh, this one is ensemble member number eight. High pressure dominating over Scandinavia. It looks like the chair beds have shifted colder tonight with these easterly winds. Uh, 
More ensemble members are bringing in Eastly Wings in a week's time than was the case this morning. So this is placed us in a proper Easterly. We've got the air backing into the west of Russia. And you would assume really quite cold air is coming across the uh, continent at this point into the UK. Then we're going to move an area of low pressure into that Scandinavian high over weekend of the 13th, 14th. There could well be snow going on there. Heavy snow too as this low pressure is trying to move into this area of high pressure. Uh, the high pressure is winning the battle. So these areas of low pressure bringing snow uh, are diving southwards. And this is looking really quite cold as we go into the second half of January. We've got uh, blocking from Greenland to Scandinavia as well. And uh, it just carries on this uh, through into the uh, second half of January. Still looking pretty blocked up to the northeast. Still looking quite cold. And these areas of low pressure could still be bringing wintry weather. Ensemble member number nine. Look at this. We've got high pressure over Scandinavia in a week's time. And the winds are in from the east again. Very similar to several of the ensemble members that we've seen. This is a big upgrade tonight from the GFS ensemble. So these easterly winds. We go into the middle part of the, of the month. This is Saturday, uh, Saturday 13th, Sunday 14th. Low pressure coming in off the Atlantic into that cold air from the Scandinavian high. It could well be bringing snow, that area of low pressure uh, with it. Uh, then we go through into the second half of uh, January, turning unsettled uh, and quite uh, cold, and eventually high pressure coming back in from the north. That's another cold one, ensemble member number uh, eight, uh, number nine. This is number ten, high pressure over Scandinavia again on, uh, th on Thursday. And we go through to the weekend, and we're trying to move low pressure into that Scandinavian high. It's stalling. Look at this. This is a snow event that ensemble member number 10 is going for on Saturday the 13th to Sunday the 14th. That's a big snow event that's taking place there across many parts of the country as that low pressure comes into the block and uh, doesn't dislodge the cold air. Then we go into the second half of January and uh, eventually the Atlantic does break through, but obviously quite a doubt about that, although by the time you get through Saturday 20th, the high pressure is back in over Scandinavia once again. That's on some member number 11. Winds are in from the east and it looks pretty cold there as we're going into the weekend of the 13th and the 14th of, uh, of January. This is the 15th. Look at this. High pressure dominating over Scandinavia and easterly winds properly heading our way, I would assume, containing cold weather as well. Uh, cold temperatures, I should say, as well. And uh, we keep it cold and blocked as we go up to the 20th of January. Big, big upgrade, this, from the GFS Ensembles tonight. This is Ensemble member number 12. High pressures over Scandinavia on Thursday. Low pressure is struggling to move in from off the Atlantic Ocean. That could be a bit of a snow event there on Friday uh, the 12th. Then low pressure does break through. This is a more mobile one, more Atlantic driven. So eventually we would have to come up to a more Atlantic driven one. This is it, number 12, uh, bringing the Atlantic in. Um, through the middle part of January. That's number 13. The high pressure's over Scandinavia in a week's time. The winds are in from the east. This one also breaking down that ridge very quickly, moving low pressure in from off the Atlantic. So that's quite a wet, windy and mild middle part of January. This is number 14. The high pressure looks stronger over Scandinavia in a week's time. This area of low pressure is coming in off the Atlantic, up against that ridge of high pressure. Uh, and what's going to happen with this one is that eventually it turns quite stormy. So no releases with this. However, the jet stream is on a southerly track, so we do pull in colder temperatures from the north uh, as we go into the middle part of January with our sole member number 14. Number 15 looks like that. Low pressure is through the country on uh, 30th 11th. It's struggling, probably bringing rain. I'm not sure the air will be particularly cold with that, but maybe some sort of wintry potential. Then this low pressure heads into the country uh, through Saturday 13th, Sunday the 14th, but it's diving southwards and a big ridge is building to our north between Iceland and Scandinavia. So this is getting the wind into the east again. Not sure the air is particularly cold with that, but it certainly is turning very blocked, and it is quite cold there, running into the middle part of January, 
Lancet probably bringing smart weather back into the second half of the month too far away to worry about. Uh, that's on from number 16. And uh, on the Thursday, high pressure is over Scandinavia. What's going to happen as we go into the weekend of 13th, 14th? So uh, it's sort of in between, it's in between that when the high pressure continues to sit to our east, we continue to have low pressure to uh, the west as well. So that's neither one thing nor the other, really, ensemble member number uh, 16. This is number uh, 17. High pressure looks like it's pretty strong over Scandinavia on Thursday. Uh, low pressure is moving into that through the weekend of the 13th and the 14th, breaking it down quite quickly. And then we go into this quite cold and stormy spell through the uh, middle part of uh, January. That's number 18, high pressures over Scandinavia on Thursday. Uh, low pressure is struggling to move into that high pressure. So this is really quite blocked to our north and northeast. These low pressures are struggling to get in, possibly bringing something a bit wintry through that weekend of 13th, 14th of uh, January. Uh, the low pressure heads to our south and we keep things generally quite cold up to the second half of January when the Atlantic does finally break through turns milder and more unsettled. That's number 19, and penultimately, we look like this, so the Atlantic quickly coming through over the weekend of the 13th and the 14th of uh, January, probably bringing quite a bit of cold rain, and then we go into uh, an unsettled Atlantic-driven sort of spell there into the second half of the month. And then finally, number 20 looks like that. High pressure looks pretty strong over Scandinavia on Thursday. This, this area of low pressure is being blocked by that Scandinavian high. Let's see what's going to happen with this final ensemble member. So uh, the high pressure just continues to sit over Scandinavia and it's dominating the weather with the wind coming in. It's not a desperately cold wind, but it is coming in from an east. Uh, type direction and uh, we're heading into the second half of uh, January keeping that high pressure uh, pretty dominant. Let's just have a look at the ensemble graph uh, to cover all of that and see that there are now several members of the GFS ensembles that are uh, dipping below the red line so, uh, earlier on today, generally the ensembles were above a red line. The red line is the 30-year temperature average, of course. Now, many of those ensemble members are below the red line. Some of them are doing uh, something really quite wintry indeed. I think that uh, the GFS ensembles have upgraded tonight with this easterly. It's not a done deal. There's still a lot of uncertainty about this easterly uh, next week. But as I said in today's first video, as long as that high pressure is lurking to our northeast, there's always the chance that it might suddenly become a lot stronger than the models think it will, and it might pull in. Uh, EC wins and several of those ensemble members are doing that tonight so it's still a case for next week's weather that the weather is uncertain we're going to have a cold start to next week and then where things go from Tuesday and Wednesday onwards next week it is still open to uncertainty but potentially there is still the chance that we could pull off some really quite wintry weather through the course of next week with these EC wins so I'd suggest you keep checking back you keep watching this space it isn't over yet. Uh, several of those ensemble members are bringing in some really quite cold easy wins through the course of next week. And a lot of them also, I haven't spoken about this yet, a lot of them also are trying to produce a snow event for the weekend of the 13th and the 14th of January. So perhaps put that in your diary and see whether it does verify or not. Right, that's all for now. JMA Friday tomorrow, we'll have the month-end look ahead. I'm sure we'll also do a second video uh, checking out what's happening with these EC wins next week. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.